Hi everyone, <laughs> it's Tina of Nafriwa and welcome back to my channel. So, the Queen's Gambit. Okay, I wasn't ever intending on doing a review of any kind whatsoever. But then, you know, after I watched this, I just thought, what the hell, I have to give my two cents on this. I don't even know where to start, but I'm gonna try, so bear with me. Of course it's based on a book, as all great series and movies are, um, written by Walter Tavis and released in 1983. The story chronicles the life of a chess prodigy, Beth Harmon. Because of this series, I am definitely tempted to pick up the book, because as we know, books are often way actually better than the movies and the series, but this would be a really tough act to follow. It would be really difficult to match it. Obviously, the cinematic feel, the great storytelling, the director was absolutely phenomenal. He did a really, really good job. Anya Taylor-Joy plays the main character, Beth Harmon, as an adult, and she was phenomenal. And the younger actress um, who played younger Beth was Isla Johnson. She was equally outstanding also. In terms of casting, no qualms. Casting was on point, it was perfect. As someone who knows nothing about the game of chess, how did it keep me so engrossed? Because there's so much to like. <laughs> it's the 60s and 50s feel, it's the hair, the short kind of blunt fringe, um, it's the fashion, it's the exaggerated lashes, all of this set against that backdrop of just lush cinematic vibrancy of the 60s and 50s that was really projected and really brought to life very well. So what happens? Spoiler alert. <laughs> Warning. <laughs> At the start of the series we're introduced to a young girl by the name of Beth Harmon who's recently been orphaned and ends up in a children's home. Beth is presented as somewhat of a wallflower, really someone who is just not remarkable at all but actually she really is and that's just the beauty of it she shows a level of genius which surprises her teachers and goes on to learn and thrive in the male dominated sphere of chess which is taught to her by the children home the children's home janitor not too long after she learned the rules of the game she pretty much destroys her competition and it's almost it's just so difficult to find anybody that actually competes with her or can compete with her. So throughout the entire series, I think there's like two people that, you know, she meets and matches that we think, <gasps> but besides that, she is just phenomenal. But her success is plagued by her addiction to tranquilizers, which she was given routinely as a child. So they'd give them like vitamins, vitamins, I'm not American. They'd give them vitamins and tranquilizers um, as, a, as a daily dose to kind of, I think, kind of placate and calm and control them. In her young adult life, partly because of the, well, really because of the drugs, we see this transformation in Beth. And as she's transforming and her mental health is kind of declining her f so too is her fashion not that it's declining it just it changes right so her fashion her hair her makeup all of that changes to reflect her mental health or her mental well-being or lack thereof she's also unable to navigate romantic relationships and as somebody who's so great at chess and just such a master within that field you can feel her pain the fact that she can't really foster any romantic relationships you know so, so sometimes I guess that's often that's often the thing with people who are just so amazing at something you have to forfeit something else isn't it and in this case that's what it is is her relationship to other people so she's able to navigate the world of chess she's able to focus and be a master within this one field but in everything else about life she doesn't have that same level of control and it's it's frustrating to watch and it's sad to see that decline in certain when certain things happen because you're always rooting for her and she's that like, I guess that's what it is as well she's a really likeable character you are constantly rooting for you want her to have the happy ending you want her to you know go through her, her hurdles and come out the other side and you want her to win every game so I think you know hats off kudos to the director for that there's never a moment where you think oh she should have lost to make that seem more realistic no you want her to continue to win watching someone be so incredible at something is just spellbinding 
And as I said, I don't know anything about chess, but as the series progresses, you get accustomed to hearing certain moves and certain techniques, and you really begin to appreciate the tactic and skill it takes to succeed in this domain. And if you don't already know, the title itself, The Queen's Gambit, is borrowed from an opening move in the game of chess. So that was clever. But all in all, a lot of the moves and terminologies just went straight over my head. You know, from what I read, they hired, um, obviously, professional chess players to come and choreograph the set so that, no, not professionals, they, they hired master chess players to come and choreograph the set so that professional players watching wouldn't be put off by the series, which again, is a smart move because even though obviously people like me, the layman, we don't understand the game, there are others out there who were probably looking out for all the errors, but um, they wouldn't find any. Brilliant, just brilliant. <laughs> but all in all, I'm telling you, you don't have to understand the game of chess in any way, shape or form in order to enjoy it. It's just, it's about brilliance and the mastery of skill and about watching somebody put so much effort into something and succeed. So the story, obviously, there's, um, what's the word I'm looking for? There's the moral. The moral of the story is if you try and try and try and try, you're not going to be Beth Harmon, sorry my love, but you, you will attain some level of success. But it's all about not giving up and it's all about finding different ways to, to, learn, and use, to learn a skill and to really hone that skill. And of course, the pride is even greater for me because I'm a woman and she's a woman in a male-dominated sphere, really showcasing that gender doesn't define us and therefore should never restrict us. My favourite scene was perhaps the last few scenes when she's completed the Tournament of Champions and faced her Russian opponent in Moscow. Um, obviously this is the 60s, um, we're talking Cold War period, and initially the way that Russia is presented to the audience is that it's really secretive, it's really threatening, unwelcoming, everything that as Westerners we were taught to, you know, we were taught to think about the former USSR. However, it's just lovely when you see so many Russians come out to listen to the, how, you know, to listen to the games and to just follow what's happening. And the last scene when she's finished her game and she just gets into this, the government car, which is supposed to take her straight to the airport, she stops and she gets out and she walks through a park in Moscow. And as she's walking, she meets an um, older gentleman playing chess and um, they recognize her and they just all kind of huddle around her. They crowd her and everybody's spellbounded by her and by her talent. And she's very responsive to all of them and she's really kind and you could, I don't know, you feel like a proud parent in that moment. It's like, yes, darling, you did it. And an older guy asks her to sit down and play with him. And of course she agrees. And um, in that moment when she sits down with him and she says her last words, and she says this in Russian, she says, let's play we're taken back, we're transported back to when we first meet her in that basement with her janitor sitting down so unsure, but she's not that little girl anymore. She's grown, she's a woman, she's sure of herself, her destiny is aligned, and all the hard work and struggle that you see her go through has paid off. It is just, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. I don't have enough adjectives in the world to describe that moment. It's just so, so, so very moving. So well done. <laughs> well done to the directors. A really, really, really moving scene. I would love to see a part two, but I just think, where would they go with a storyline for part two? Is she gonna stay in Russia? Is she moving to America? What would happen? So because of that, I just have to gracefully accept that this is it. It's a mini series. It's done, it's finished. And sometimes the best stories are like this. We have to know when to stop on like Game of Thrones. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, so <laughs> it was absolutely wonderful. If you do get the chance to watch it, watch it, you won't be disappointed. Give it time. I, For me, it wasn't a slow burner whatsoever. Like I got into it straight away, but I know that for a friend of mine, they're like, oh, I've seen the first episode and I don't know, hang on in there keep watching trust me you'll thank me later if you've watched it if you've read the book you know whichever please leave your comments below and let me know what you think as well if you disagree with my review if you think it's utter rubbish let me know why and i'm happy to argue it out with you 
<laughs> but yes, if you do get time, certainly watch it. It will be worth it. Until next time, take care. Bye.